Um, welcome back. Good afternoon, Meridian here. And joining us on set, as we mentioned before, Susan Schmidt and Jake O'Brien from Michigan State University. And um, Susan, we've had you on the show um, a lot not of, this not show. this show, but we've had you on the station here. And uh, you're back teaching in Lansing schools, right? I am. I'm teaching high school at Eastern High School. Okay. I teach uh, learning disabled students okay. English, All uh, right. actually. So jumping back into the classroom after being away for a few years, right? Doing some things. Yeah, I was. You know, I, while, I, while I worked at the legislature, I continued to teach at Lansing Community College, but mm -hmm. the. The high school scene is a different scene. I could not. I, I would never. I don't want to go back. back. No, I was just going <laughs> to say that. I don't want to go back to high school. No. No thanks. Um, but we appreciate you guys coming in. Obviously, talking this kind of ties into Women uh, Women's History Month in March. Mm -hmm. And now we had talked about this documentary. It's called Misrepresentation. M I S S representation, mm -hmm. uh, or misrepresented. No, misrepresentation. Okay, I was right. Okay, I shouldn't have doubted. Um, and this has been out for a couple years, but why did you get involved with this, and what exactly are you doing with this, this film? It, and it has been out for a couple years. 2011, it was in the Sundance Film Festival and received some awards. Um, last April, in the midst of my campaign for state representative, um, I went to a viewing, a showing of it at McDonald Middle School, and it was so powerful. I can only tell you watching, it's about an hour and a half documentary, and um, I took it very personally. Um, not only did I take it personally because I'm at the end of the middle of a race, but um, for the past uh, five years prior to that, I had worked in the legislature, a very male-dominated uh, environment. Right. And um, it was very clear to me that the what the documentary spoke about, which women that are not in leadership positions that is why we have a lot of the problems we have um, in the way laws are passed, um, how young girls are perceiving themselves, and um, I just could see we needed to educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when the election ended, I went back to school. I'm working with the woman that helped show it then, and we decided we wanted to make a real big push because we didn't have a very good crowd that night. Mm -hmm. And we really want to help educate the community about you know, what's going on and how to help our young women mm -hmm. uh, feel different about themselves. You talk about a male-dominated legislature, and you have those, we talk about those numbers. What, it's striking, actually, the numbers of uh, male and female uh, serving in the House and Senate. What is it? It's yeah, it is very striking. And um, if you go to the Capitol during session and you stand in the gallery, if you're in the Senate, we have 38 members there. There are four women that exist in the Senate. In the House of Representatives, we have 110 members. There are 24 women. Mm -hmm. So women are 51% of the population. And um, our representation does not reflect that. Wow. No, that's, that is really surprising. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. and even, well, was it summer when all that, everything was happening at the Capitol with discussions going on, and then Eve Bensler right. comes and talks at the Capitol steps? I mean, it's got to show you something that women do care and that they want to be a part of this. I mean, how did that make you feel when you saw all these women come out and speak their minds about what was going on just inside of um, It was very level? powerful, um, but unfortunately the political system right now on the national level, we've seen some changes. We took some seats uh, at, mm -hmm. in Congress, but um, it's still a very difficult road for women, uh, both, um, you know, even, you know, working up through being chosen as the candidate and mm -hmm. then winning. It's a very, very difficult proposition. Right, but I mean, you have, we have 51% of the population is female. Why are we voting for men then? <laughs> well, that's an interesting concept. <laughs> that, is, um, well, that is a good question. Yeah, I, I think what you see, um, and what I've heard women say, I, I was involved in a project called the White House Project where they help, their motto is add women, change everything. And it's how do we get women at the table? Not mm -hmm. we don't want to take over, but how do we get women at the table? Mm -hmm. And they talked about um, how important it is that uh, women, well, how women many times will be their worst enemy. Mm -hmm. You'd think that they'd be there to support the, each other. Men will support men, but uh -huh. what is it oh. that women don't have enough confidence in each okay. other? So that whole program was how do we as women say, you know, if we really do want to have a voice, we've got to help each other get there mm -hmm. uh, to be at the table. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. That's interesting. I have Thought it was a good question. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. And is it well? And is it also maybe an issue too that just not enough women are running and feeling that they can take on a, a role like that, a leadership role? Or I don't know. Is that an assumption? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, when you think about candidates for anything, whether it be school board, I, I had served on our school board, township um, board, women have to see when they're younger. You know, 
that that is a possibility. There was a great statistic they talk about in the documentary that if you ask boys and girls at age seven mm -hmm. who can be president, it's about even. Mm -hmm. You ask yes. them at 14, and the boys way outnumber the girls. The girls start to see themselves different. And um, the media, which is what this documentary talks about, uh, helps girls start to develop their concept of who they are and what women are. Mm -hmm. And it can be very disturbing what is being fed to them, to see themselves more as a, just a sexual being mm -hmm. and not as a, a person that could be a leader. And um, so we've got to fight that, I think. And so now begins this, this push to bring about awareness about this documentary and about this issue, and that's where uh, Jake comes in and, and bringing yeah. it to campus. So I want to talk to you, Jake, and kind of why did you get involved with this? And, and, and uh, you know, as, as a man, you wouldn't, you wouldn't assume that men would want to take a role maybe in this, but why is it important that you, that you took a role in this? Um, well, when my little writing class, which is a service learning class, mm -hmm. which kind of means, you know, you go into, um, kind of go into the community and work mm -hmm. to make the community better, or like, you know, make some sort of change. Mm -hmm. um, when we were presented with, like, the different community partners, Susan being mine, um, she showed us the trailer, which I know that the people are going to get to see, too. Yep. Um, but, and that thing really did, as Susan said, really just kind of comes to you. Um, it's, it's a powerful trailer. Yeah, it really is. and. The reason like I took interest in it is, um, I don't know, I always just kind of, I've always thought, you know, women kind of got the raw end of the stick. Um, I just, I think that must just be maybe my mom and my older sister um, kind of just being my role models. Mm -hmm. um, but it just really, after seeing the trailer and hearing what Susan had to say, what she wanted to do with this project, um, I really felt like I could contribute to it. And I just personally felt connected to the issue. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to do my best to help out mm -hmm. and make a difference. Do you want to play that trailer? Or? And uh, yeah, you know what? We can, we can play it. We have a little snippet. It's a, like an eight minute trailer. I think we have about a minute here. Um, dealing specifically with kind of media and that, the influence that it has on women. So we'll play that and then we can talk a little bit about that. So take a look here. Misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. Our kids today live on Facebook and cell phones. The diversity of the platforms means that those images are impacting your kid 24-7. And whatever restrictions existed when we were growing up simply don't exist today. Girls get the message from very early on that what's most important is how they look, that their value, their worth depends on that. And boys get the message that this is what's important about girls. We get it from advertising, we get it from films, we get it from television shows, video games, everywhere we look. So no matter what else a woman does, no matter what else her achievements, their value still depends on how they look. So yeah, just a, a little snippet there. And, and Jake, I want to ask you then, you know, because there, you have these gender, these gender roles that are kind of set out, and here's what a man's supposed to do, and here's what a woman's supposed to do, and you kind of are supposed to fit into these roles. And is it maybe up to, you know, it's not all on women, maybe the men have to take a lead too in, in saying that, hey, Maybe we should take a look at what we're doing and how we're portraying you know, our role and, and reassess that. Do you think that men need to step up here too in this? Yeah, I sort of think um, most men, men in, you know, in all a whole for the most part, are kind of stuck in like what might have been the past norm, mm -hmm. the norm of the past, which is you know, they, I guess, take charge. They do most of it. But it's quite clear from many things women have been doing in the recent history that they are by far just as equal or like intelligent as men are, sometimes more so. Um, <laughs> and I think men need to start kind of realizing that we don't really live in this old era where mm -hmm. it seemed like they had to do everything. It's much more equal and it's not like there's anything that makes us better than women. Mm -hmm. That's just, I think, something we for some reason won't let go. Mm -hmm. Well, now, do you see, you know, at Michigan State, among your friends, among your peers, is this still, I mean, is this it's still an issue, right? Yeah, no, I mean, walking around campus, when it comes to like the, what the trailer just said about image, what girls caring about, like how they dress and look, it's pretty crazy what you see sometimes on campus or like Saturday nights, sometimes even Thursday nights. Um, <laughs> 
what you'll see, you know, the girls you'll see kind of walking out in the bitter cold when they're wearing their really short dresses, just to, I guess, to impress. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, it's just, it's, it, get, it seems almost like crazy how much effort they put into, mm -hmm. I guess, what they buy, what they wear, and I just don't think they need to. And it's, I think it goes back into how they feel boys and men look at them. They feel mm -hmm. like they have to impress men. We talked about this once. We we were talking about going to hang out one weekend, and mm -hmm. he texted me, meet me here in That's right. 10 minutes. And I was like, well, I'm in my pajamas, so it's going to take me at least a half an hour to get ready, and then another half hour to pick out an outfit. Right. I'll see and you in an I'm hour. Like, yeah, and I was like, well, I'll just throw on a T-shirt, we can go, and she's got to <laughs> spend it. But right. doesn't isn't that part of the thing, that there's this expectation that mm -hmm. You have to look one way, I have to look another way. And, mm. and that goes back again to what we were talking about at the top of the show with the media, which mm -hmm. we're kind of a part of. And this, this image that, this just pervasive image that's always out there. I mean, how, you have, you, you have kids, and how do you deal with not, because it's got to start at a young age too, right? And, and yeah, I'm, re this? I'm really glad you brought that up. I have two sons, they're yeah. 22 and 24. And um, when they were little, I remember the Disney flicks um, all the women in the Disney flicks had a waist of 14 inches, you know, kind of like the Barbie dolls I played mm -hmm. with. So I was ingrained early, you know. Um, and I, I remember they didn't watch that many Disney movies. I, I was troubled by it, and I was especially, I sort of boycotted. When I saw Pocahontas at age 13 with this huge voluptuous chest, and I just thought, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. um, I, di I was excited about Beauty and the Beast because the woman was smart. Mm -hmm. She yes. liked to read. You know, M Mulan was another one. Um, but in general, you know, I'm, I was, I'm trying to raise my young sons to look at women as viable human beings, mm -hmm. to respect, and that they have brains, and that they're able to do what you do. And so um, it was a constant battle, uh, I can tell you. And it, it continues to be a conversation. Mm -hmm. One of my sons is helping coach the girls' basketball team in East Lansing, and we've had some great conversations. I mean, his eyes, this has been a great experience for him because they don't have sisters, so mm -hmm. um, it's a challenge. It's a challenge even the mother of, of sons. As a mother, if I had daughters, because mm -hmm. I have friends that have daughters, I can tell you as a young woman, that as I was coming up through the ranks, um, it's a huge pressure. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't feeling the kind of pressure girls feel today. Um, but it, it is a huge pressure. I've always heard that people say when they have kids, it's much, I don't know how true it is, it's much easier to have sons than to have daughters because there's so many more things that you have to deal with with your daughter and, and these pressures that they have. And you know, you kind of just let your boys go and they'll figure things out or something like that. There's this sort of the stereotype, right? Yeah. And uh, I don't know how, how true that is, and, uh, but there is sort of, as you mentioned, there's all these added pressures on a young yeah. girl t when they're growing up. And, I think maybe it takes extra work on the parents' part to say that, hey, you know, you're, you're going to be fine. It's not, you know, don't give in to these, these sort of societal things, these societal pressures that are out there. I, I don't know if it's more difficult because raising boys, you have different challenges. The media makes young men think that the only way they're going to be satisfactory is to be buff oh, and yeah. masculine and strong and never show a soft side. And so as the mother of sons, you want to raise young men that are sensitive, caring. Good point. I mean, you know, I'm lucky they had their father who's a person that was able to role model that, but media is doing the same thing for young men mm -hmm. that it is for women. This movie focuses on women, but, um, you know, we have a lot of problems on both gender identities, I think, and what we're asking our young people to identify with. No, that's, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. um, so with this documentary then, um, it's, you want to bring uh, awareness on the campus and bring the community out. So when are we, when are we going to be able to see this? When are people going to be able to come out and take a look at this? Well, it's going to be um, Saturday evening, mm -hmm. um, April 13th at 7 p.m. The McDonald Middle School Parent Council actually bought rights to this movie and the curriculum. And they are sponsoring, they're one of our sponsors to help us show it. So um, it will be at no cost. And we are going to be doing everything we can to get the word out to different parent councils. To um, uh, We're going to have a lot of women there and men there that are leaders. Mm -hmm. um, on campus, we're going to be advertising it, you know, all ages. Because I think it, as that saying that's probably overused, it takes a village. Yeah. We need to have true. everybody present mm -hmm. to understand. I mean, it's no different than back in the day when I taught high school in Indiana. I taught the students how to look at commercials and to be a good critical consumer. 
we as a community need to be looking at those things and being critical on, you know, what is this doing to our youth? Mm -hmm. Um, so we're going to be out there, and then it's the format's going to be we'll show the documentary. It's about a 90-minute documentary, and then we'll have about an hour where we'll have food and drink, um, and we just want people to mill because after you watch this documentary, you you watch, just want to talk it. about it. And we just viewed it at my home Saturday night. I had Jake and the three other um, MSU students over to my home, mm -hmm. and Ann Watson, who's my other community partner, mm -hmm. and. You know, I was in tears at the end of it. I mean, it's a powerful documentary, and um, I hope we have some really rich conversations. Yeah, open forum there. Mm -hmm. All right, so April 13th um, at uh, McDonald Middle School, right, mm -hmm. at 7 p.m., and we have some information to put up on the screen if people want to know more about it. What do, yep. we, mm -hmm. what do we have? It's uh, misrepresentation.org. Mm -hmm. yep. um, more information about the documentary, and then uh, you can call that number, 517-333. Yeah, and that's my phone number, and so I can help them with anything okay. they need to know about the event. And Susan's great at getting back to you, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I think, and you've seen this documentary. Yeah, we watched, well, I, we watched part of it in my women's studies class, because it was only, I don't know, an hour-long class, but we watched part of it, and you left wanting to see more. And then when you finished it, you still wanted to see more. It was, I don't know, and it was interesting, too, because I was the only student in that women's studies class that was in the media or had anything to do with communication. So everybody wanted to hear what I had to say. Because I, I don't know, I'm, I get to be, well, I am right now on television. It's yeah. just like, it's, it's interesting to watch. Yeah. Even the preparation, I mean, I've interned at stations where they spend an hour in prep just doing their hair and makeup and the guys walk in, walk right into the studio. And I mean, yeah. it, I mean, why, why can't I just walk on with, my hair up on the top of my head and <laughs> no makeup on. I mean, why do I have to work harder than you to get on TV? <laughs> the, well, the, and that's the big question is where, where do we start with tackling this and where do we sort of redraw these, these right. lines and, and redefine the roles that I think we're playing in, in society as men and women? And I think that the documentary is a, a great start to at least getting the conversation going and, mm -hmm. um, you know, Great work that you guys are doing. So we thank you guys both for coming on, Susan and Jake. Great, thank you. And thank uh, you. again, misrepresentation.org, or you can call Susan, 517-333-3587. All right. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, hometv.net will have more information on there as well. But uh, that wraps it up for today. Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, so check it out. And uh, thank you guys for coming out. We appreciate and great. it. Great. And you know, I want to thank Penny Gardner. She's the instructor at MSU yes. that invited me and uh, Ann Watson as far community program and the whole idea of service learning and what she's doing with these students. It's really just an amazing thing to have their energy. Yeah. Right. Great. Well, good luck thank to both you guys so in doing this project. Thank you. Thanks. All right, see you next time. <laughs>